All right, we're going to do this dynamite report, and then we'll get into the uh, the rampage. Rampage tapings. No spoilers. Okay. All right. Uh, I thought the show was really good. Am I the only one? So it opened up with a great six-man tag, which was uh, Luchasaurus, Jungle Boy, and Hangman Page against Adam Cole, Kyle O'Reilly, and Bobby Fish. Every big, crazy, nutty move in the book. Double springboard, double doomsday device, all sorts of crazy stuff. But in the end, the Jungle Boy he ended up in the ring by himself. Hilo from Red Dragon. Cole hit the boom, and they pinned him. So it looks like Red Dragon is going to be match. in line for the tag team titles. And they, they, they strongly suggested it's going to be Cole versus Adam Page again. And uh, later in the show, they mentioned there's another Battle of the Belts coming up. I forget the date, but I would expect that uh, that it's going to happen there. We had a uh, video of Chris Statlander taking her makeup off, so I think she's getting a new gimmick. We had John Moxley and Brian Danielson versus Chuck Taylor and Wheeler Yuta. Yes, I realize they gave Wheeler Yuta and Chuck Taylor some stuff, especially Wheeler Yuta. But they beat the absolute hell out of these two dudes. Brian Danielson, I don't know if this is like actually him or if it's just like a great character, but he's the most sadistic guy I ever saw in wrestling. He is so full of unrepented joy at absolutely slaughtering these poor nerds. And they kill these guys and they submitted poor Wheeler. You'd almost tore his head off. And then as they're leaving, you just halfway up the ramp and he's like, bro, I got I got my ass handed to me. I'm learning from the wrong blokes. And he turns around and he goes back to the ring and Regal's in the ring and he, he offers a handshake and Regal just slaps him across the face and sadistic Brian Danielson starts laughing. You never saw a guy laugh so hard. And poor Wheeler Yuta is shunned. Now he's going to be shunned by two groups. So he's really going to have to work his ass off to get in this group with uh, Regal, Moxley, and Brian Danielson, the FBMFs, the name oh of the team according God. to me. Can you imagine them bringing in Minoru Suzuki as a guest trainer one day down the line? You notice something about Minoru Suzuki and Daniel Bryan? Because you remember that wacky AM show they had where he's like wrestling with a bear or whatever, and he's doing all this wacky stuff, and he looked like Ed Grimley. And you see him do all these crazy things, just like Minoru Suzuki. You know, he's riding down to the ring on a bicycle. He's doing this. He's doing that. Yet nobody says anything. Nobody says, look at those garbage guys. Look at those guys doing all that comedy. They're ruining everything. You know why? Because they'll kill you and that's the amazing part about this brian danielson character right now is the fact that at any moment just like that he could just turn around and kill you john moxie wants to look around and and breathe heavy and act crazy and i'm busting through things and look at me i'm nuts i'm crazy the craziest people never have to do that sort of thing all right don't make me miss another break ftr backstage they strongly hinted the best there is could be coming in as their manager and don't forget, we've got an Owen Hart Cup coming up. We had a Jericho Appreciation Society. I'll go into full detail on this one tonight. But it is exactly as we said it was, which is Chris Jericho is a WWE sports entertainer. That is his heel gimmick in AEW. And when he said, I'm not our, we're not wrestlers, we're sports entertainers, these people Booed this guy unmercifully. They don't want to see a sports entertainer. Nosferatu of pro wrestling. They've changed the name of 2.0. I'll never remember. Matt something. Daddy other. Matt. Jeff. Daddy. Yeah, we should use those gimmick names instead. <laughs> cool hand Ange. Yeah. So uh anyway, uh this was this was great. This this gimmick is money. And we had Scorpio Sky beating Wardlow. Of course, y'all know what happened. Referee distracted. MGF comes out. He posts Wardlow. Scorpio Sky hits his finish, pins him. Everybody's beaten down Wardlow afterwards. And uh, they hit him with a chair shot. They hit him with the diamond ring. So, obviously, Wardlow has to go through Spears. And then Wardlow will ultimately get to MJF. Exactly what you would expect. And exactly what they should have done here in this match. Hardys versus Private Party. I thought it was fine. I wouldn't say it was great. 
It was a, uh, you know, when the Hardys go out in the Indies and they just do some some match with some local team. That's essentially what this is. The fans, bro, they didn't care one bit about seeing a match. They wanted to see the Hardys do their greatest hits. And every time they did one of their spots, they went crazy. Jeff tagged in, did his, you know, clothesline comeback. They're going nuts. Private party gets the heat. Don't care. So the Hardys hit the uh, senton. Everyone went crazy. They won. And then uh, Andrade's uh, family office uh, came down to destroy them, but Sting and Darby Allen came out to even the odds. So clearly, we have got a a multi man match, eight man tag coming up. Matt and, in that shirt. Ugh. Then, as noted, the main event of the show it was Thunder Rosa versus Britt Baker for the championship in a cage. It's very clever because Britt comes out without uh, Jamie Hayter and uh, and Rebel. And they're doing the match, and and uh, early on when they're just wrestling, like the crowd was kind of quiet. But once he started busting out those gimmicks, holy smokes, this these, this crowd went nuts. So the referee takes his bump, and Audrey has to come down to replace the referee, and the doors wide open, and I'm sure everybody, you know who you are. They're like, oh, there's going to be interference in a cage match. God, it's just like WWE. I hate this show. I'm never watching. No one ran in. The door shut and locked. But they made you think they were going to kill the gimmick, and then they didn't. We had an air raid crash off the middle rope through chairs. We had bumps onto thumbtacks. Britt Baker built the Empire State Building, and then she fell on it and crashed to the ground. And finally, the Thunder Fire Driver into the tax. Clean win by Thunder Rosa in her hometown on her birthday. And confetti fell from the sky and people were crying. Rosa was in tears. I mean, dude, yes, I know it was irritating the way they, the way they built it up. But they built it up that way for a reason. To build to a cage match where there's no way in and there's no way out. And since Britt Baker's friends can't help her, it's a fair fight, and she gets beaten clean in the middle of the ring in the woman's hometown. God, anything else you want to complain about, you geeks? Well, I know what you'd complain about. The way I read the spoilers for the next show. Therefore, I've enlisted the help of Fauntleroy. Guys never thought you'd hear Fauntleroy, did you? Mm. He's a little feminine. But here is the lineup for AEW Rampage. On Friday night. No spoilers. First match, Darby Allen versus The Butcher. Second match, Layla Hirsch versus Red Velvet. Third match, House of Black versus Bear Country and Fuego del Sol. Main event, Keith Lee versus Max Caster. No spoilers. <laughs> she may have gotten into my supply there. It's... Uh... Please, Mike. There you go. The dramatic reading of the Hulk Hogan Brutus Beefcake promo. Please welcome the Mega Maniacs, Brutus the Barber Beefcake, and Hulk Hogan. Well, you know something, Mean Gene? Now more than ever, with just one week away, I'm aware of how destiny is going to take its course, brother. Because just a few short weeks ago, bro... When I was laying in the weeds at Venice Beach, California, and I had Monday Night Raw tuned in, I saw Money Incorporated run across the ring with a metal attache case with the speed of a lightning bolt. And as it crashed into Brutus, the bionic barber beefcake, Blood Brothers face, I saw what I didn't want to see. I heard what I didn't want to hear. The emotions ran from head to toe. I chilled. I goosebumped. And I broke a sweat as I stood up, man. And I rushed from head to toe. I spent two days running up and down the aisles of Kmart, picking up that tonic, getting all that hair color together, and getting ready to do a number on Money Incorporated. I was sniffing for the hair tonic. I was sniffing for the butch wax. And lo and behold, as I kicked down the door of the Ramada Indoor at 48th and 8th Avenue, just a bit north of the Mid-City Gym, I found the brother, Brutus the Barber Beefcake, with his feet propped up on an ottoman, laid back in a lazy boy, watching Mo, Larry, and Curly with an ice pack on his nose. 
Thank God for the man upstairs that Brutus the Barber is okay. So I took to the desert outside Las Vegas, chopping down some big nasty-looking cactuses, trying to dull up the titanium steel blades, chopped down a couple of small mountains, and then it came to me, brother. I knew that I'd just throw the scissors away because I'm just going to yank the hair right out of their heads. So Las Vegas, Nevada, and the whole wide world, what are you going to do when the mega maniacs run wild on you? The Hulkster, Hulk Hogan, and Brutus the Barber Beefcake, and Mouth of the South Jimmy Hart, the Mega Maniacs, perhaps the next tag team champions of the World Wrestling Federation. The Hulkster has never looked better live and in mint condition. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, the Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.